This episode of What's Going On With Shipping, after 105 days in a Chinese shipyard, the motor vessel President Wilson is on the way back to the United States. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercaglian, and welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. So if you've been following this channel, you know that we are huge fans of Madeline Walchko and the entire crew on board the motor vessel President Wilson. Her series, Restricted to Ship, has four episodes that are out, and she was documenting the plight of the President Wilson as it was stuck in a shipyard in Shanghai, China, during the COVID lockdown. The ship was supposed to be in a shipyard for about 30 days, and again, 105 days it took to get clear of the shipyard. The vessel has just left Korea and is heading eastbound for the United States. So, I thought we'd take a look and look at Madeline's most recent video, which conveys the excitement about being out of the shipyard, and then put the vessel into some context about why this is an important story that we should know. After 105 days in shipyard, we are finally on our way down the Yangtze River. We're making our way to an anchorage to be put back in service and then we will be able to continue working cargo on our usual liner service run. This is just the next step in eventually getting this crew back home to the United States. We have a few more ports to work for cargo, and then we'll be able to eventually cross the Pacific Ocean and get back to the west coast of the United States where we will be able to have a crew change. So thanks so much for following along and we'll see you on the next one. So as Madeline said, they are out and that was back in June 7th. Today, uh, as of this point, mid-June, they have already left Shanghai. They had gone up to the port of Qingdao in northern China loaded cargo both in Shanghai and Qingdao, and then to the port of Busan, Korea, where they have just departed. You can see the vessel is in the Tsushima Straits between Korea and Japan right now. And if we look at her pass track, zoom out here, there she is in the Straits. She was in the port of Busan, a very busy port, as you can see. Ships loaded in there all the time. Uh, really a big, huge service. The President Wilson as a vessel and talk about her and, and the role she plays. So why is it important to know about Madeline and the President Wilson? And I'll say a couple of things about this. Number one, I think number one, of course, go watch the whole four episodes. And I'm hoping she does a fifth one on the way back in to kind of wrap everything up. I'm, I'm really interested in knowing and what the crew is like once they're back out at sea again and back to normal and back on everyday watches. Uh, I'm gonna send her a note to tell her that, that I hope she is, is capturing that. But President Wilson is one of 60 vessels that operates under something called the Maritime Security Program. This is part of the US government's program to ensure that there is a US flag merchant marine operating in foreign service. This is the chart of the ships that are in the Maritime Security Program. This is a little dated chart. They need to update this. this is a 2019 chart. But right here, you'll see the President Wilson in here. She's one of 23 gearless container vessels. There's another 11 geared container vessels in there, some heavy lift ships, some roll-on, roll-off ships, and a couple of tankers. But these ships that are in the Maritime Security Program receive a stipend, about $5 million per year per ship. So the U.S. government pays part of the President Wilson to operate, and that's because the President Wilson and its five sister ships operate a key route, and that's this route right here. This is the route that operates between the United States and over to Japan, to Okinawa, to Korea, and to China. So military forces, they're there, and also there are subsidiary routes that service Guam here uh, in, this, in the area. And so APL, which was formerly the American President Line, and I'll link over to this story right here on Freight Waves. They have a two-part series on the history of APL, the American President's Line. APL is a, is, a, is a 
lineage from that. APL is, is much different today. As a matter of fact, if we come here to the end of the story, in 1997, APL was acquired by what was then called Neptune Orient Lines, NOL out of Singapore. And they took over American President's line that they re-monogrammed it as APL. And APL operated under NOL during that period of time, but then NOL was consumed in 2016 by CMA, CGM, that's the French line. And now APL is a subsidiary of CMA, CGM. You'll see in some of the videos, crews wearing those uh, boiler suits when they're in there. The President Wilson operates along with its five sister ships on this route, a very key route that provides transportation of containers between the United States to these places, but also under military contract, moving military supplies to US forces stationed in Japan, in Korea, in Okinawa, and in Guam. Really essential. And for literally a third of a year, one of those six vessels was out of service. This came on the heels of a ship, the President Eisenhower, that suffered a catastrophic engine room fire on board, lost power off Santa Barbara, did a video on that. Vessel lost power and narrowly came ashore and it was in the shipyard in the United States for a prolonged period of time. And that raises an interesting question that we really should be asking from the story that Madeline has so well documented is why was a US flagship in a shipyard in Shanghai, China, and not in a shipyard in the United States. Now, there are some groups out there who make big hay of this when a US flagship goes into a foreign shipyard and they love to highlight this. Hello, Cato. They love to highlight this all the time. And understand, the reason that the President Wilson went into a Chinese shipyard is very simple and it's very basic. There aren't enough shipyard berths and capacity in the United States because we have let our maritime infrastructure decline. We have, since the end of World War II, we've seen the decline of the US Merchant Marine. If you don't believe me, watch that video right there and you'll be able to see it. And this decline means that what shipyard space is available in the United States largely goes to the military, to the US Navy, to the Military Seal of Command, to the Coast Guard, to the Army. Yes, the Army has boats, uh, to the uh, NOAA Corps, there's very few commercial berths that are available. And for a commercial ship that has a set shipyard period, 30 days, which is what President Wilson had, if they can't get into a commercial yard in the United States, they go overseas. Now they have to pay a tax on that. They have to pay a 50% ad valorem tax on it. But that's the reason they go to China because China is cheap. Why? Because China is state controlled. There's no profit for the shipyards. They don't have to make a profit. They are state controlled. And so understand we, subsidized part of the President Wilson and a part of the taxpayer money we gave to APL, that $5 million is being paid to that shipyard to do the work that we have allowed to, to denigre, uh, uh, denigrate in the United States because we haven't invested in our ship capacity. We haven't invested in the Merchant Marine, haven't invested in our shipyards. We just haven't. And it's one of those big issues we see. And it's, and let me be clear, what President Wilson's crew and Madeline Walchuk and the entire crew had to go through was terrible. It, it, it demonstrates why it's really important to have shipyards in the United States so those ships can do repair work in the United States. Understand a repair facility in the United States repairs not just commercial ships, but also military vessels. It gives us more capability, more ability. Right now, 93% of all the world ships are built in three countries, Japan, Korea, and China. China's the largest. And they're in an arms race against each other to knock one out. And they're being very effective at that. And they use a lot of mechanisms to ensure that they overcome each other. And when people argue, well, you know, we need to get out of this and let foreign shipping do it. Understand the foreign shipping, you know, again, I, I did a whole video on registries. You know, there are three registries, Panama, Marshall Islands, Liberia. We are centralizing control of international shipping into these conglomerates. You heard the president talk about the nine big container companies. You know, who are the nine big container companies? One of them is CMA CGM, which is a, has as its subsidiary APL. And all of this goes to the larger context of the ocean shipping. What Madeline showed you was some great insight at the deck plate level of what goes on board a ship 
and how American mariners find them. Right now, that ship is heading back to the United States. And if you look again at its uh, service, it's going to be heading back here to Los Angeles. And uh, the vessel has an ETA into Los Angeles. We're looking at uh, June 26th right now getting in. Not sure if that's going to be the exact date it comes in, but that will be the end of the voyage for those mariners on board. Mariners in the United States sign on for a voyage. Usually you start in a port and you end in that same port. Those are your uh, shipping articles. And in the case of the President Wilson, when they return to the Los Angeles, they are ready to get off. You're going to see an entire ship's crew swap out. And let me be clear, unions, if you're watching this, you better have crews ready to go on board. You better have everybody ready to tag out everybody on that ship because they are getting off. There was a story today about a container ship leaving Jacksonville, Florida, where three of the crew jumped off the vessel and swam ashore. Uh, not sure about the whole details about it yet. It's an interesting story. I saw it on Maritime Executive. But this crew wants to get off. And if you watch Madeline's uh, video, you know they want to get off. They're ready to get off. Uh, it's a long time to be stuck on a ship, especially in a shipyard in China, where they didn't have food, water, air conditioning at all times, power. I mean, it was, it was, that, that was pretty, uh, pretty rough that they went through. Uh, if you can, Link on over to Madeline's videos. Again, I'll have them up here in the show notes. I'm up here in the link above, but also in the show notes down below. Please go over there, take a look at them. Uh, the four episodes that are out as of now are great. Again, hoping to see some more episodes coming from Madeline. So if you enjoy this video, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it across social media. And if you can, contribute to the Patreon page, help support the page so that I can keep bringing stories like this to you. You can either go through Patreon or the super thanks down below. I thought I'd end this video with the crew of the President Wilson in a video that Madeline just recently uh, posted. I can't think of a better way to end this video than uh, looking at that crew with some big smiles on their face. To our next video, this is Sal signing off.